1075 WGCI, the shy's number one for hip hop and R&B. And listen, we always love when guests stop by, yeah, man. man. Zach, you want to tell the fam who we got in the building with I us mean, today? I mean, you know what I'm saying? We got the brothers from all the smoke, Yo. man. Steven Jackson, Matt Barnes in the building. Yeah. Yeah. What's you know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 Summer in Chi-Town. Summer yeah. time shy, that's what they say. Yeah, listen, well, I, well, I put our city up against anybody's in the summer, man. Yeah. You got a little bit of paper out here in the summer? Of course y'all know about that. Y'all do whatever you want to. <laughs> man had whole pan of Harold's chicken delivered to the yes, ring. Sir. <laughs> Keep it gutter. What brings you guys to town, man? Man, we got a tour out here. Uh, you know, we asked our fans where they wanted to see us at, and and, and Shy was the overwhelming uh, first stop, man. So we excited to be out here tonight. Atheum, Anthony, how you say it? I keep fucking. Athenium, I think the Ant- Athenium. A- a- Anthony, yeah, Anthony, tonight. Anthony. Doors open at six. Show starts at seven, man. So pull up, hang out. That's gonna be dope, man. I mean, I'm excited, man. I want, I want to. I want to pick y'all brain a lot on this yeah. on this basketball tip. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Especially because, you know, we just came off the uh, conference conference finals, mm-hmm. man. And I ain't going to lie, I was pulling for Ant-Man. Now. I just like that young, a lot of rowdy were. team. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Um, why why you think they couldn't overcome Dallas? Experience and experience and just, you know, when you have two closers and, and Minnesota had one closer. Mm. And when Ant's not going, you know, you don't really have a second score. I think uh, Carl Anthony Towns didn't really step up the way we expected him to. Mm-hmm. Expected him to, and Luca and Kyrie was consistent the whole way through with carrying their team, and their role players stepped up as well. So I think yeah. that's why they was able to get out this. And thing. I also think too, I mean, not to mention Dallas had two closers that's been there. You know, we talk mm-hmm. about experience. All you know during the season, youth is is expected because you know you more availability. But when it comes down to playoffs and further to go in the playoffs, the more experience you need. And you've got Kyrie, who's been to conference finals and won championships. Luka, who's won championships as, as teenagers overseas, but it's been the conference finals. So I just think their experience down the stretch was too much for Minnesota. And yeah. Minnesota will get another crack oh, at it. They'll be back. Early. Oh, now, now. I'll coach I, it too, question, in my opinion. Coaching, yeah. I think oh, yeah, Jason Kidd did, did an amazing job. Yeah. The question, the question I want to ask, like, what is this going to mean for Boston mm. if they go to the finals and they lose. Do you break that team up? Because they done been the conference finals. Now you get to the finals and you don't win it. Like, do you break that team up and try another formula or you run yeah, it back? Yeah, man. I think, I mean, it's it's hard to, to, to get there. And they've done it several times. So, I, I mean, I, that, that's a management decision. I'm glad I'm not paid to make that decision. But, I mean, I think this is big. And I think, you know, when you talk about them getting there and, and possibly losing or winning, this is big for Jason Tatum. I feel like Jason Tatum's been on this stage, you know, four or five years out of his six years in the uh, career, at least been in the conference finals or finals. So this is a big opportunity for him to kind of elevate himself and, 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 and separate himself from this young crop of, you know, this next 26 and under group of guys that are kind of next in line to, to, to be the face of the league. So uh, Jalen Brown's had a big year. You know, Tatum stepped back a little bit, allowed Jalen Brown to do his thing a little bit more. So they're a nasty two-headed monster with yeah. Derek Wright and, and, and Drew Holiday. People don't realize that's why Milwaukee – struggle this year because they lost him although mm-hmm. you know dame is great drew brought so mm-hmm. much to the floor but i think to me that the ticket for boston to win and i have boston the seven is is porzingis being able to be out there be healthy he's been out for about it'll be 40 days by the time they play calf strain you saw Giannis. they they, they you know they took Giannis out the rest of the playoffs with his calf strain we remember a handful of years ago kd tried to come back with a calf strain and we remember what happened to him yeah. so yeah, you know yeah, yeah. You, you wish you know nothing but health for him but i think he's going to be key because Denver, or excuse me, uh, Dallas is too big. They're active. Jalen, yeah. shout out to Jalen, uh, Jalen Brown too for his off the court success. Oh yeah, super dope, absolutely. <laughs> super dope. Also, yeah. I'm I not talking about the intelligence stuff. Oh. I'm talking about shorty. Oh, who he's grabbing? Uh, Yo, yeah, yeah. No, he got, no, he got a lot of games. Versatile, <laughs> intelligence, women, versatile. That's what's so good, good man. Day. Day. We're talking about Bernie's. Yeah, yeah. Bernie's. Oh, 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 yeah. Shout out uh, for him <laughs> playing BB on the court and off the court. Man. My man, <laughs> it's just, I do I do want to switch over to the women's game though because you know what I'm saying in Chicago we got we got the, the shot town yeah. you know the Bayou Barbie is now shot town shot town Barbie now um and it's just been a lot of controversy Don't with it got by Cardoza now yeah. I'm, I'm, not, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a South Carolina fan. Let's I'm, go. I'm not. I'm not forgetting okay. about Cardo. You know what I'm saying? Just that double-headed monster right here in the shy was mm-hmm. just big for the city. And you know what I'm saying? The way that the city has just embraced her right. has been has been crazy. But it's been some controversy with, you know, people been going in at like Caitlin Clark. You know what I'm saying? I feel like she's really elevated the game and gotten mm-hmm. a lot more eyes. You know what I'm saying? Them girls have really brought a lot more eyes to the WNBA. But how do you feel? Do you feel like the criticism that Caitlin Clark is getting is is fair or unfair or too much expectation or 
What are y'all thoughts on that? I mean, that? I just think it's a part of it. You know, the number one pick, high expectations, and, and and I think overall the fact that we're having these conversations is great for the game. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? I think people have to understand, man, it's a process with these rookies. And and although she's, you know, she was the number one pick, you know, you got Angel Reese who who was out here, and I think this was just a great rookie class that has. I think the success of this team was they all we we all got their storylines in college with the NIL mm-hmm. and all these women came yep. in with all due respect to the W they came in bigger than the W, you know, making more money. They were a bigger brand by themselves. So I said, I'm going to be interested to see if that crosses over to the W and it has. So I think there's a lot of new fans, which is great. And and, and people are having a problem with all the men commenting on the game now and mm-hmm. talking about it. But to me, with growth, you can't pick and choose what you want with growth. A lot of mm. good comes with growth, but a lot of BS comes with growth. So they kind of have to deal with it. But I just think overall the game is in a good place. I think all these talented rookies have been the vehicle to show the rest of the talented women in this league. You never want to forget who laid the path for these girls and who's already doing it. You know, Asia, we're huge fans of Asia Wilson. So yeah. I think overall it's been great. Uh, I love Caitlin. I, I love Angel. I love all, you know, Cameron and, and Cardoza. I mean, I, t- you know, I think it's a really strong rookie class that's going to continue to carry the torch and, and, and take this league to another level. And we want all the smoke, man. Matt Barnes in the building, my man, Steven, a.k.a. Stack 5 yeah. champion, NBA champ. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, everybody in the building, we're having a good time. We're talking basketball. But I want to talk to you guys because you're in the space now as podcasters, and you all have both been on ESPN, FS1, doing analysts, you know, talking about players. How tough is that transition from being a player? Because you guys are players' guys, y'all locker room guys. Y'all family keep the business, family secrets inside, guys. What is it like now when you got to get on that platform in your suit and you got to critique one of your homies? You got to critique mm-hmm. guys that you love. How do you maintain that fragile balance? Because athletes, man, little egos can get hurt real easy, especially by one of the homies. <laughs> yeah, the best thing about it for us is that we ain't putting on no suits and going to work for nobody. We work for ourselves. Right. So mm-hmm. we, ain't, we ain't going on there on nobody else's platform. We controlling our own narrative now, just like other shows are doing. And we have no yeah. problem with um, speaking our authentic opinion. We, we've actually played the game. <clears throat> so we, got, we have different opinions and different experiences from other people. So I honestly don't care how they feel. Respect it and check it. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I got a job to do. You know what I'm saying? It's not, I'm not making it personal. I'm not talking about your personal life. I'm not talking about what you're doing off the court. And talking like about that. basketball. I made all the mistakes in the world, and it was all for the media, for the whole world to talk about me. So I, 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 I've been on both sides. So you got to take the good with the bad. You can't expect to be praised when you're making game-winning shots and when you miss the game-winning shots not to be talked about. That's just how it goes. So um, you got to take the good with the bad. Like I say, truth uh, a lot of people don't like the truth because truth sound like hate to people who hate the truth. But we're going to continue to give it to you. Um, I just think the crossover is tough. You know, obviously, teammates, homies. I think there's a way we're in a, we're in a place in the media space, particularly sports, where the loudest is not necessarily correct. It's, it's the first not not correct uh, to say the clickbait mm-hmm. for, for, for views. Um, I've always, you know, approached the game with, you know, it is tough to critique your former teammates or the homies or just people that do what you did, but I think you can critique without being disrespectful. And I think now people are being loud and disrespectful thinking that's kind of the road to make it because those yeah. people are being rewarded. You know what I mean? So it's just a kind of a fine. There used to be a line in the sand where you would talk about their games and critique their games, but I think it, the, the line is blurred now, and people are saying whatever they want for clicks and <laughs> views, which is crazy, and that's how some people get hurt. So Ain't nobody got no hands put on <laughs> right, them. That's right, right. that's what I'm saying. So... To me, it's a tough crossover, but, I mean, if you know enough about the game, you could do it. Yeah. That's yeah. dope. That's dope. I do want to uh, switch over to the collab that you guys got with the uh, Air Jordan 4 yeah. uh, with Shoe Surgeon. Shout out Draft Kings. Shout out Draft Kings. Shout out Kings. Shout out Draft Kings. Shout out Draft Kings. Yeah. Make sure they heard that. Yeah. Make sure they heard that. And Draft Kings. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. How did that come about, man? And in, in, in the AJ4, what, what, what made the Air Jordan 4 the, the shoe to collab on? Well, I think uh, for, for me – you know, Jordan 4s are my favorite Jordan. What is your favorite Jordan, Mike? We like, like the ones, right? Yeah, the ones. We like the ones and low tops. But uh, we, had, we had to come together to, to, to pick a Jordan. And um, we had the opportunity through DraftKings and Shoe Surgeon to, to do this collab. And I think anytime, you know, you, you get an opportunity to, to collab with a guy like Shoe Surgeon, you know, with the great work he has done in the past and still doing, I think, I think you got to take advantage of it. Um, and we just wanted to create a shoe that was us, um, the, the four. It's, it's something that we both like. Um, we're able to put the DraftKings logo on the tongue, mm-hmm. uh, the the all, all the smoke logo, 
all on the shoe. And, the uh, python pi- on yeah, it. The python on the back of it. We got yeah. different logos inside mm-hmm. the shoe. Uh, actually, the DraftKings logo is in the shoe as well. So um, it's, it's just a great collab that we took advantage of. And mm-hmm. I think it's going to be special when a lot of our fans can actually get this shoe because a lot of people would never be able to afford a shoe like this from the shoe surgeon. So the fact that we can give some away, I think it's going to be a plus. Uh, a stump a dude out shoe. Yeah. Right. They well, all I, black. I, I, I guarantee you. They all black. <laughs> <laughs> hey, free I, I guarantee you. You're not stumping nobody no. out in these shoes. <laughs> you're wearing these to your prom. favorite event. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yo, man, prom. they was black. I was yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> now, these ain't one. They still. Right, they ain't one. But they these still. Like, these like, like, we got all the smoke on these shoes. <laughs> okay. We got all the smoke on these. Now, you see what you're stumping out here. Yeah. You see what you're stumping out here. Hey. Um, still hanging on this basketball. Where's the league at now? Do you think the league is in a good space? Where do you see it transitioning to, and who do you guys think are going to be your next faces of the league? Uh, Ant-Man, Luka, of course, next face, Jokic, those guys. As you see now, the the shift is turning. You don't see KD, Braun, Steph, and all of them in the playoffs no more. You know, you start seeing these younger crop of guys, and, that, and then Shy. Oakland, OKC, all these guys are the next stars and next faces of the league. But I love the way the league is going because they're making more money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and that's what it's really all about, you know, making money. And I, I want guys to appreciate the game a little more and play and, and uh, uh, compete a little bit more with all this. Uh, Stop being friends. Low, low management and all the stuff. Like, I ain't with. I ain't right. with none of that stuff. I'm a little old school. Right. I think the, 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 the money's going up so much, y'all should force yourself to play every game. We played 82 and we wasn't making nothing. You know what I'm saying? So, but I love. Well, the we was making that, something. Just I mean, not, what they something. <laughs> not what they made. Yeah, not yeah, fair. Not they right. We yeah. making tens and elevens. They making fifty and shit like that. So it's all good. But I'm I'm happy that the game is going to where it's going. I'm happy for the players because you are what you negotiate. Yeah, and they're doing a great job of that. I well, think we're in a unique position not to cut you off right now as we're really seeing the passing of the torch. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I hope people appreciate these last runs that Bron and KD and Steph yeah. and some of yeah. these older players have because I think we live in an era now where you critique and disrespect and they didn't do this or he can't do that instead of just kind of appreciating what we've been able to witness the last 15, 20 years. But, you know, everything Jack said, this new crop is great hands and, and a lot of talent and, you know, I like the way the league has allowed these guys to play a little bit more defense in the playoffs. I hope that transitions into the league regular just regular season here on out. Yeah, man. You can really tell the difference oh, between absolutely. a regular season game and a playoff mm-hmm. game. The playoff defense be yeah. for real. You yeah. can really tell the difference. Yeah. But one thing that I love about y'all's podcast is, you know, you talk about everything. You know what I'm saying? From sports to lifestyle, even when y'all give y'all personal stories and, and, and all that. I, I really enjoy the All The Smoke podcast, and I'm excited to see it live tonight, yeah. Chicago. So make sure y'all join us Pull and up. come Coming out uh, 7 p.m. tonight. We're going to give away some tickets, man. We're going to leave you guys with some tickets to give away, too, man. Some gifts some tickets right. away. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we can do that. Pull we can up, definitely man. do that. Yep. I might definitely. have some half chicken on deck. Hey, Come man. on now. <laughs> As you said, now. it's going to happen. <laughs> with Soleil. the sauce. If y'all know about Soleil, make sure y'all pull up on Soleil, yeah. too, right here. That's, that's my yeah, girl yeah, spot. Man. Pool, real good. Appreciate it. Hey, man. Appreciate y'all. Thank, Thank for y'all for having us. having us.